Hey, it's Coin Snobs. I'm Keith. And I'm Jason. And this week we decided to switch it up a little bit and do a box of nickels. It's been, oh, probably about a month and a half since we've done a box of nickels. Maybe two months. It's been at least a couple months. So Yeah, it's been a bit. We're going to tear into us a box of nickels, see if we can't find some good stuff. Let's cut it open. And we'll just make sure they're circulated. Oh yeah, they're circulated. Alright, so we got us a box of nickels. Alright, wrap up coming later. See you soon guys. Hey guys, and welcome to the wrap up. We uh, actually had some pretty interesting finds in the nickel box. Um, we found quite a few 1959 and before nickels, uh, but I'm just going to show you the highlights. A lot of them were just, you know, normal ones like 1953 D's and whatever. Um, if it's not super cool, I'm not going to show it to you. But uh, anyways, first one we've got here is a 1951 plane. As most of you know, 1964 and back, the mint mark would be to the right of Monticello here. So this is a plane or a Philadelphia. Uh, reason I'm keeping this one, though, is because it has some lamination. Right along here. You can see there's a line right there. And what uh, what's believed happens with the, uh, the lamination is it's actually a a place where part of the planchet is peeling up or cracking and uh, they think it's from contaminants to get in the uh, different layers of the alloy of the of the uh, planchet and it causes it to crack or peel so kind of interesting technically an error so we would keep it and then we've got a 1955. Looks like a lot of other 1955s. Denver. There's the mint mark to the right amount of cello. Uh, we're keeping this one though because of the older coins, it's kind of a nicer coin. It's not completely, completely destroyed by circulation and or roached out. Not a bad coin, so we'll keep it. It's one of the nicer ones of the older circulated guys that we found. And then we got a 1951. And this one, as you can see, is a much older die state. Got a lot of the metal flow there along the rim. You can see all the metal flow lines right there. From it being an older die. Okay. And that is a San Francisco. Water die stayed on the reverse, obviously, as well. But you can still see some of the detail in Monticello there. So, again, one of the nicer ones of the older ones. So, I'll show you that one. And then... We found a proof. 1970S. Looks like it used to be a cameo coin. Been circulating for a while, as you can see, and it's got some of the wheel marks of death there from the uh, from being on the end of a roll and getting hit with the crimper, but it's alright. It's still a proof coin, so. We've found some pretty nasty proof coins in circulation, but still a proof coin, so we'll keep it. It's not worth a whole lot when it's this badly circulated, but still need to see that at some point someone, for whatever reason, broke this out of a mint set and decided that they needed to spend it or wanted to spend it or whatnot 
full steps, of course, but it's a proof coin, so it would be more uncommon if it wasn't full steps on Monticello. And then we actually found some silver. 35% silver war nickels, 1943. Pretty well spent. This is a San Francisco strike. And you can tell by the big S mint mark above Monticello. Uh, in 1942, they had Type 1 and Type 2. Type 1 was still the nickel alloy. Uh, and then Type 2 uh, was 35% silver. And that was because of the war efforts. They needed the, uh, the nickel. But, not bad. Pretty well circulated, as you can see. However, it's a war nickel, and it's got some silver content. Very awesome. And then we got another 1943. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this one is the Philadelphia. And then for Philadelphia, there was two very well-known errors for the 1943 Philadelphia. One being a double dive verse, which should be able to be seen here in God We Trust, which we do not have. And it's pretty apparent in the date. Yeah, definitely not the double dive verse. And then also... There was a 1943 3 over 2 Philadelphia, where the easiest way to identify that would be a giant line coming up from the bottom part of the 3 right there. Almost looks like a fish hook. And that one does not have it. So, just a normal old everyday average 1943 Philadelphia. If you could call it that, especially if you find it in circulation, I mean, that's just cool. Alright, and then this one, I about had a heart attack when I saw it. I actually opened the roll and I noticed that it was a different color, and I thought there's no way it could possibly be what I think it is, but it was. 1942 and I would say it's in AU to extra fine condition it's just a beautiful coin found in a roll and it gets better I did it because the color looked weird and it was weird because it was silver so it's a 42 type 2 this is the transitional one that I was telling you about. And it's actually got some steps there. On Monticello, which is really crazy. I mean, that's... That's a pretty decent strike. Actually, that's a really decent strike. And the color on this thing is just beautiful. I love the original mint luster on a war nickel. It's really awesome. But yeah. Imagine that. Found in a roll. That's why we do it right there. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right, guys, that's uh, it for the highlights. Um, again, if uh, you guys have any comments, let us know. Anything, uh, any suggestions or anything like that? Uh, any questions? Uh, but until next time, have a good day. Love you guys, and we will see you soon. See you later.